what in the world is up guys welcome back to my channel this is the butterfly diary where we talk all things lupus slash sle and other chronic illness related topics um, i have been kind of slacking on bringing out some videos lately for you know typical health related reasons but you know i figured at the end of the day not to be too hard on myself when not putting out a video just because the main reason i just started the channel really was just to uh, be another outlet for people going through my similar situation so that's what i'm gonna say to doing so if i can get to a video then that's fine if i really really can't you know i just kind of put it off for another day and hopefully you guys will be understanding of that today i am actually going to be talking about one of the topics that i don't know why my hands are like staying up going to be talking about lupus beauty tips actually one of the topics that kind of interested me tips that were more geared to people going through my similar situation yeah you guys already know the deal go grab a blanket go get cozy and let's get started what uh, the perfect setting would be for my filming sessions but anyways lupus beauty tips so first of all i'm just gonna put a disclaimer out there because i don't know if this is just all in my head but like to me there's just something very sensitive about this topic it became even more like pushed to the forefront of my mind after i started going through all of this lupus journey i guess you could call it it really made me rethink certain ideas certain understandings that i had um just beauty in general, but also within the circle of chronic illnesses and things like that. There's certain things where like now especially we just own as a society kind of knew about, but we never like could put a label on it. The way that you're raised, the way you see certain things on social media or society tells you, all these different things that have to do with beauty standards and where beauty comes from and all that stuff. Everyone has a different understanding of beauty. Our ultimate beauty needs to come from our identity. Personally, you know, if you're a Christian, your identity comes from your relationship in Christ and your identity in Christ. And that kind of just takes emphasis off of the physical and puts it more towards inward beauty and just you know your personality your values the way you carry yourself and stuff like that even outside of uh religion faith it still i think applies to anyone i think that that should always be the case and just because they don't look like someone else you know they don't need to be comparing themselves to anyone else god forbid you know you have to go through a situation like me where all of that stuff is stripped from you without you having a choice in it it does just kind of hits you in a different way like it just makes you so aware so fast of all of these different areas that you otherwise might not have noticed you were so like shallow about after i guess a couple of months was when i started to lose like my hair my hair started thinning you know i'm sure a lot of people with lupus or other chronic illness can relate to just the thinning of your hair or like the falling out of patches of your hair i mean i would like take showers and as soon as i would get out my mom would brush my hair as much as she brushed off is as much hair as would come out i've always been very connected to my long hair so that was to say the least a very humbling experience being completely like stripped away from you in front of your eyes growing up i didn't consider myself like physically attractive compliments always came from my hair so ultimately i attributed my hair to my my beauty and all that stuff uh, take pride in like my hair and stuff and don't get me wrong you know there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that you know, i have pretty hair or i have a pretty face or whatever it may be like no god gave us that for a reason and we should be thankful for all that but you know it's not to the extent where i feel like we should be just putting our full identity or letting that determine our confidence and how we portray ourselves or how we display ourselves in society. Things like hair loss and stuff like that because of a certain condition or illness. I think that that in itself also can be its own conversation that I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about, but it is a real thing. I wanted to be careful with what I was saying in these videos because I don't want to come off as you have to find a certain way to make yourself look quote unquote normal. Obviously, if you don't have a choice in going bald or losing your hair or having short hair, you know, it's, it's normal to kind of have that, I, I don't know how to say, like that. Uh, idea that 
you do want to look as a normal to a certain extent because you didn't have a choice in that transformation. I didn't want to impose any idea of like you have to be a certain way if you do start going through this. Like I don't want it to come from a place of vanity. My opinion, my tip is if you do want to doll yourself up in a certain way, examine your intentions with it. Just know that ultimately whatever you do on that outside isn't as important as the inside you know there's nothing wrong with wanting to look good every now and then or you know every day if you want for all those people who say oh no they're just being vain or whatever no i don't think that there's anything necessarily vain about wanting to just look normal not necessarily changing but just simply restoring something that was normal in the first place so yeah so that is just my huge disclaimer when we're talking about beauty the main things that come to mind are skincare hair and makeup and I guess the fourth one would be like your natural body. Those are the ones that I'm going to mostly focus on. But the first one I wanted to talk about was hair, just because that is probably the biggest concern with people who have lupus or their chronic illnesses that cause hair loss. When we go through this hair loss, depending on how much hair you lose, some people will just experience, you know, thinning of the hair. Other people will, you know, experience thinning and um losing of your hair like i did or just complete baldness i never reached complete baldness but i did have bald patches and um i had to cut my hair shorter just so that i could kind of even it out and stuff like that even though because i was so attached to my hair like i didn't care that i looked crazy and that it was uneven i just didn't want to cut it at all so when it came time to cut it i just was completely like heartbroken and just sobbing along the way i kind of found ways to kind of Play with it. I know that when you have shorter hair, it's a little bit harder to do certain things with your hair. So I'm just going to be giving a little bit of tips for people who have short to bald hair. Also, I have tips for people who have thinning of hair and stuff like that. One of the first things that I wanted to talk about were hats. Um, that can be anywhere from like beanies, uh, bucket hats. Like I have this this bucket hat here. It is dirty, but um, it has a little butterfly signify the lupus butterfly rash. There are ways that you can hide your hair without actually hiding the fact that you have short hair. It's kind of building your confidence in having short hair or bald hair. Another thing that I kind of wanted to mention were scarves. So it just accentuates it in a way. How many do I have? I think I have like, I'll come to 13 scarves in total. And I have some like a silk one here. This one I think is cotton. I don't know. Some of these, which are kind of like i think they're like in between scarves and headband i'll kind of just show you guys how i style them in different ways so the first one is like this you can well let me just show you what i usually do if they're shorter i'll just kind of fold them kind of like a hot dog the ends here i'm gonna fold them and fold it and fold it until it reaches the end and I'll just kind of twist it like this I'll twist it like this. I'll leave a little bit of air in between and then wear it like this. I know it looks kind of weird with both of them here and I'm trying to kind of push it back. Sometimes I'll leave it here and then I'll use this to push my hair back like this, which is what I did with this one. Another way that you can wear is, this is a, a silk scarf. So I, as you can see here, it has the tying of the knot in the middle. And then what I did, I think, was I folded the top a little bit like this. I started doing the same thing and you can see there's a triangle of my head you do this you take it here you take the two ends a little bit before the two ends just so you can keep air and that way i can just do this so i do this and then what i'll do is i'll i'll tie it i'll tie these two on the back tie them like this and then you can honestly just keep it like this, but sometimes what I'll do, if this part, sometimes it bothers me. So I'll just put this part, this end that hasn't been tied, I'll just put it in between the, the knots and it just kind of stays like that. A little bit different. Put this over your head. This, you just do this and you push it up like this and you can wear it either like this or you can keep most of it here and then like push some of it back like that 
something like that is that one what else you can honestly purchase them anywhere i really didn't notice how expensive they actually were if you want to get the good quality ones with the nice design Oshin is a good place to look joann's walmart michael's they can just just buy the yard and then cut it up however you want it next thing i wanted to mention is a little bit i guess controversial especially if you're at the boat of losing your hair and that is in relation to wigs i'm in this little box it's called e on hair I didn't know anything about wigs prior to losing my hair I had a little bit of help from my brother's girlfriend i also had to kind of go on youtube to see what kinds of wigs they recommended i, I really only have one wig because personally me i feel like having especially like a long wig it feeds into that oh i need to have long hair um to look beautiful and all that stuff which i don't want to just accidentally or intentionally be fe feeding into that of course there's nothing wrong if you if you don't feel that way and if you feel that that's just your preference you just want to have your hair like that but i do use them on like special occasions if i want to like dress up look different if i can find the link to this specific wig then i'll, I'll put it in the description there is the wig i liked all the reasons that she got it she said that she doesn't like it to look too nice because natural hair isn't like that anyway this was lace from before getting this i didn't know about uh headband wigs so that's a, another good option another thing that i kind of wanted to talk about some who's experiencing like thinning of hair or just bald patches also natural remedies that you can use to just maintain a stableness in your hair so that it doesn't necessarily grow but it also won't be falling out like crazy i talked to my pcp about it i talked to my rheumatologist basically all my doctor said whatever you do to your hair it's not really going to respond when your body flares up basically your immune system is completely overactive and i asked him about and these aren't as natural i would say but they are also like an option if you want using like rogaine and taking like biotin in the form of like pills and things like that but in my case they didn't necessarily agree of me using anything other than my medications because they didn't know how that would interact with the other medications that i was taking would be a little bit careful with that if you're going to look into that i would ask your doctor first the one that i've been using it's called biotin boost this is just the conditioner but i also have the shampoo now that i am in a more stable position i've started to notice my hair thickening more it's not necessarily growing like the length isn't growing as much but it's become a lot thicker than when i first started out that combined with some of the natural remedies that i will show you guys first i was using just regular jamaican black castor oil this is the brand that i was using i don't know if you guys can see that i think you can find this in like any department store walmart the other one that i've been using now is 100 percent pure asian black castor oil other oils avocado oil coconut oil i will combine the castor oil with the biotin conditioner just because it is very thick and sticky it gets stuck automatically to the first thing that you touch on your hair i'll use the conditioner to kind of even it out skin care is probably one of the most important but especially when you're a lupus patient especially from the sun we'll say usually like 30 and above spf but i actually got this one that has 50 dermatologists recommended this is a neutrogena brand other stuff that i'll use collagen skin rescue so use this oil free facial cream with vitamin e there's also a cleanser that i don't have with me at the moment but i've been really liking the superfood cleanser by youth to the people and it has kale spinach and all this really good stuff and last thing i wanted to mention in terms of skincare any form of cocoa butter is also really good for stretch marks the bio oil cocoa butter coconut oil some people use like coffee scrubs for stretch marks and stuff like that and some of the makeup that i use if you're looking for something natural or lighter on the skin physician's formula that was actually started by a doctor whose wife actually suffered from lupus and as a result had you know sensitive skin i'll use like this blush i know that selena gomez has like a rare beauty line like the blushes and stuff that she uses like on her cheeks that are liquid and i really wish that i could get those but since i don't have money or anything then i just kind of went with this one this is the organic wear dewy blush elixir with super fruits i have a couple of these um physicians formula 
butter <laughs> you guys can see it's like a little bit harder to pronounce the lipstick with spf of 15 so it's really good with eyeliner and like anything eye related i've always had issues with that because i have very sensitive eyes to makeup actually i found these it's good for sensitive eyes hypoallergenic and all that stuff physician's formula eye booster waterproof ultra fine liquid eyeliner and then if you don't like liquid so much there's another one that's also really good from them that's actually just pencil and you just screw it out so Physician's Formula is really good. Most of their products have SPF in them for any regular chapsticks, Burt's and Bee, Wax Lip Balm, and then this is the one that my PCP had recommended, Immediate Relief, Relief Lip Repair, which is specifically for dry lips and it's a clinical brand when it comes to powders and things like that that is like the main thing that gets messy the powder eyeshadow and it literally just sticks on your skin there's not really a lot of powder that comes out of it it's more like a cream you don't have to worry about anything dusting into your eye another one is honest beauty and so i have to try that one out hopefully soon i can get into a little bit more experimenting ultimately beauty is more of an inward thing and if we're not feeling that way then i think that we should first work on coming to a place of confidence and comfort in ourselves and as a beautiful human being before we start searching for outer things to compensate for those feelings you know what i mean trying to do my best or whatever and helping you guys out and please let me know if you guys have any other tips if you've been through some more situation or if you just have it and you just feel like this is something that could benefit anyone. See you in the next video and yeah, bye!